Over the past few years, we've given you our picks for the best original TV series on Netflix. While the streaming giant has had many successes, they've also had plenty of failures. Coming up, I will count down our picks for the top 10 most disappointing or hated Netflix original TV shows to ever appear on the streaming service, with the number one pick being the worst of them all. And we're starting right now. Starting off our countdown at number 10 is Friends from College. This American comedy follows a group of Harvard alumni in their 40s living in New York City as they reconnect and discover that love hasn't gotten any easier with age. It features an ensemble cast of comedic actors, including Keegan-Michael Key, Fred Savage, and many others. Even with its talented cast, this show is a complete mess. The plot lines are predictable and paper thin, and there are just too few funny moments for the show to be classified as a comedy. Surprisingly, Netflix renewed Friends from College for a second season, which was released in January of 2019. After coming to their senses, Netflix canceled the series in February of 2019. Number 9, Girl Boss. This American comedy is based on the best-selling memoir of the same name of the person who started the fashion retailer Nasty Gal. The show follows Sophia, a rebellious misfit, as she learns how to create an online fashion business while working as a campus safety host for San Francisco's Academy of Art University. With her online business growing, she learns how to deal with the realities of being her own boss. Quite simply, what made the show a failure is that the lead character is not likable or interesting in any way imaginable. Girl Boss was canceled by Netflix after just one season. Number eight, Insatiable. This American dark comedy drama is about an overweight teenage girl who is being bullied in school. After having a freak accident, she goes on a liquid diet over summer vacation. Returning to school, she is now thin and becomes popular at her high school while seeking revenge on those that had bullied her in the past. If you listen to most TV critics, you would think that this was the absolute worst show to ever appear on Netflix. Well, we can think of seven that are worse. Here's the bottom line. The show features dark satire with over-the-top performances and humor that will offend sensitive viewers. If you're easily offended, skip it. Otherwise, it just might be a show that you'll enjoy. Insatiable has been renewed for a second season. Number 7, Fuller House. This American sitcom is a revival of the original series Full House, which aired from 1987 to 1995. Just like the original, the show is set in the same house in San Francisco. It follows recently widowed DJ Tanner Fuller, who accepts the help of her sister Stephanie and her best friend Kimmy, who move in to help raise DJ's three sons. The show is mostly a nostalgic fan service for viewers of the original show. The storylines lack any originality, and the comedy would best be described as corny. Apparently, there are enough fans of the original show that watch this one too. Four seasons are available right now on Netflix, and has been renewed for a fifth and final season. Number 6, Haters Back Off. This comedy series is based on Colleen Ballinger's YouTube character named Miranda Sings. In her quest to become famous, the show takes a dive into Miranda's oddball family life and adventures. While her bizarre brand of humor may work for a 3-4 minute video, it does wear thin over a 30 minute episode. I guess enough haters didn't back off. Netflix canceled the series after two seasons. Number five, Marvel's Iron Fist. This American superhero drama is overwhelmingly the least popular installment in the Netflix Marvel Universe. It follows Danny Rand, a martial arts expert presumed to be dead, who resurfaces 15 years later with the special ability to call upon a mystical force known as the Iron Fist. While suffering from the same pacing issues and filler as most of the other Netflix Marvel shows, it also lacked a compelling storyline, comically terrible fight scenes, and the lead character Danny is not very likable. After season two, Iron Fist was canceled by Netflix. Number four, Real Rob. This American sitcom stars Rob Schneider, along with his real life wife, Patricia, and daughter, Miranda. The scripted series follows the ups and downs of Rob's acting and stand-up comedy career, along with his personal life living in Hollywood. Real Rob has been compared to other shows, including Curb Your Enthusiasm, Louie, and Entourage. 
I would agree with the comparisons for the most part. All that's missing is high quality writing, funny scenes, and original storylines that don't feel like they've been ripped off from other shows. Other than that, if you've never watched another comedy series in your entire life until now, you might enjoy The Real Rob. It was canceled after two seasons on Netflix. Number three, Kiss Me First. This British cyber thriller drama was co-produced by Channel 4 in the UK and Netflix. It's about a lonely 17-year-old girl who is addicted to a virtual reality online game. While playing the game, she befriends a confident party girl with a dark secret. Not only is this a bleak show, it takes suspending belief to a whole new level. The plot is quite strange with holes throughout, and the computer graphics were also really bad. As terrible as the series was, I hope it doesn't dissuade filmmakers from making better quality TV shows and movies integrating VR into their projects. There's still been no word from Netflix or Channel 4 whether Kiss Me First will be coming back for a second season or be canceled. In the runner-up spot at number 2 is 13 Reasons Why. If you have a teenager that just walked into the room while watching this, pause the video, and tell them this is a top 10 best of list to avoid them being triggered. 13 Reasons Why is an American teen drama that follows Clay Jensen in his quest to uncover the mystery involving his classmates' decision to end her own life. This is perhaps the most controversial show produced by Netflix, with many accusing the show of glamorizing mental health issues and suicide, especially during the second season. Even with its second season receiving low scores from both critics and viewers, Netflix has made the decision to renew 13 Reasons Why for a third season. Before we get to the top pick, here are some other dishonorable mentions that you might want to avoid. Disjointed stars Kathy Bates, who runs a medical marijuana dispensary. Even if you were high, there still aren't many laughs to be found in the show. Hemlock Grove is a low-budget gothic horror set in a small town in Pennsylvania. It's one of the earliest shows to appear on Netflix and guaranteed to cure just about any case of insomnia. Flaked stars Will Arnett as the go-to guy for advice in Venice Beach, California, while being terrible at handling his own baggage. It's a slow-moving show, making waste of its talented ensemble cast. All About the Washingtons is about the family life of a retired hip-hop icon. A loud laugh track and terrible jokes are just a couple reasons why it was canceled quickly after its first season. Gypsy is a psychological thriller about a voyeuristic therapist. This one burned so slowly that its flame got bored and burned out quickly. And The Good Cop, starring Tony Danza and Josh Groban, is about an honest detective and his crooked father. The two leads are likable, it's just overly formulaic and bland. Now back to the countdown. In the top spot, our pick for the worst TV series on Netflix is Between. Co-produced by City TV and Netflix, this Canadian science fiction drama is about a small town and surrounding areas where a mysterious disease has killed every resident over the age of 21 years old. In other words, hell on earth. After being quarantined by the government, the surviving residents must fend for themselves. In short, the storyline is terrible, production values are very low, it's poorly acted, and it seems the mysterious disease that's killing this series is boredom. You might find that watching paint dry to be more exciting than watching this show. Or as my friends in the UK might say, between is just about as dull as dishwater. Thanks for watching. If this video was useful for you, give it a thumbs up and share with others. What is your least favorite original series on Netflix? Let us know about it in the comments. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe and ring the bell icon so you don't miss out on the latest top 10s and other tech-related stuff here on Tech Gumbo.